Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 156. Today, we're going to discuss why everyone needs a teacher, at least one teacher, and why that's so critical to your martial arts development. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm the founder here at Whistlekick. I'm your host on this show, and I'm the one that, if any of you have emailed, responds to almost every one of those emails. So, Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your time here. Hopefully you enjoy it. Remember, if you want to check out any of our other episodes, we've got 155 others. You can find those at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We've got great interviews with martial artists from people that you perhaps train with to legendary Hall of Fame martial artists and all kinds of people in between representing all sorts of different styles. And we get to hear what makes them tick why they're so passionate about the martial arts, and really that was the impetus for this show. I wanted to hear their stories, and you get to come along for the ride. Of course, here at Whistlekick, we produce some great stuff. The biggest thing that we're known for is our sparring gear. You can find that at whistlekick.com. And we've got an awesome newsletter we send out a couple times a month, tell you what's going on here at Whistlekick HQ, upcoming guests on the show, some other stuff, discounts, you know, all kinds of different things. And you can sign up for that at whistlekick.com or whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We'll make it easy. Let's talk about teachers. You know, I remember growing up, my original instructor said, everybody has something to teach. And that's true. I completely agree with that. But just because someone has something to teach does not make them a teacher, or at least not worthy of being your teacher. See, everyone needs a teacher. At least one. What's the role of a teacher, at least in the context of martial arts? A teacher is there to teach. That's pretty obvious, right? But they're also there to guide, to guide your development as a martial artist and to hold you accountable. There are all sorts of roles that a teacher, a good teacher will fill that go far beyond just demonstrating and examining your raw technique. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you say, hey, you know what, Jeremy, I don't need a person to teach me new movements. I can do that myself. Where are you getting these new movements from? Maybe you're on YouTube. Well, while not the best teacher watching a video from someone else, they're teaching you. You have a teacher in that equation. If you're talking about examining your own movement, holding yourself accountable, probably with video or maybe watching some things in the mirror, that's not teaching. Because you're still working from the same body of knowledge that you had. That's called practice. And it's something we should all be doing is practicing and learning how to examine what we're doing and refine it and make it better along the lines of what we already know. That refinement is key to progression, but you're only going to go so far without new information. And that progression is really important. When we consider the definition of martial arts that we've discussed on this show, that we've bumped and prodded and poked and massaged into what we kind of accept and what, frankly, not one person has written in to disagree with. And you're welcome to if you do. I I enjoy healthy debate. Martial arts is personal development using the guise or or the methodology of combat, practicing combat. We have a couple episodes where we define it a little bit better, but I don't really want to refer back to them. It's just It's important to recognize the two components here, personal development and through the eyes, the lens of combat. If you're not progressing, you're not developing. I don't think anyone out there would agree that or would say that you've developed as far as you are going to. We're all constantly developing. Hopefully, we're taking big steps or as big as we can handle until the day that we die. So, development is key to martial arts. And if you're going to consider yourself a martial artist, I would say you have to be working on that development. And for that development to work, you need someone feeding you new information. Even if it's information that you disagree with, that consideration of what's happening in your physical practice or your mental practice, your internal practices, as they relate to martial arts, are critical to who you are becoming as an individual and as a martial artist. When I think of the best martial artists I know, they all have teachers. When I think of the martial artists that I know that are considered top of the top, 
Some of them have been on this show. The ones that I know, they're still learning. Maybe they don't have a formal relationship with someone as a teacher, but their eyes are open. They have trained themselves to constantly look at what others are doing and incorporate that in. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the extent of it or that's all that I would recommend they do. But at the same time, I'm not them. I don't know what's best for them. But I know that that constant learning process is important. And I know that there's no better way to learn more than to have someone that is your quote unquote teacher or instructor. On the flip side, when I think of people that don't have instructors, people that consider themselves, you know, the top of the top and, and they don't listen to what anybody else says or does, or, you know, they don't attend seminars or classes. And frankly, some of them don't do much more than stand in front of a class and tell people what to do. I'm not saying anyone in particular. I'm not saying everyone that fits that description, but I'm saying when I think of those that do not have instructors, I'm sorry, when I think of those people, some of the ones that fit that description don't have teachers and they're not progressing. They're not becoming better people. They're not becoming better martial artists. And I would say it's because they're not learning. Now, maybe they don't have the capacity to learn. Maybe they've decided to wall off their brain and and say, you know what? I've learned everything that I want to learn or need to learn. But I would say it's because no one's teaching them. Now, obviously, you have to be receptive to learning, but the mere act of taking an instructor, almost always, right, is going to mean that you're willing to learn. If you've sought out someone, and when we think of the martial arts cliches about the apprentice seeking out the master on the mountain and and all of those tales. How many of them involve the apprentice having to do these incredible things to prove their desire to learn? We value knowledge as a martial arts community. And in valuing knowledge, we value the people that convey that knowledge. It's not about rank. I think a lot of times people obtain a certain rank and they decide that they're too good to learn from someone who doesn't have more stripes on their belt or doesn't have more years practicing. Maybe that's true, but it doesn't have to be. I don't like talking about the specifics of of rank and time training on this show because I don't think it's a good indicator of what someone has that they could learn or on the flip side, what they would be able to teach. I'm going to do something I'm not comfortable with because others have told me that it's okay to talk about these things. And I think it goes pretty far to illustrating the point that I'm trying to make. I've been training in martial arts for uh, math, 33 plus years. I hold black belts in three different styles. And I just, in the last couple of months, joined another martial arts school. I put on a white belt. The instructor is incredibly capable. He's a very competent man who has a lot of things under his belt that I want to learn. And if you've been a longtime listener to the show or you've gone back, you've actually heard from him. Sensei Earl Smith from episode 17. He teaches a blended style, Kempo Jiu-Jitsu Eskrima. And when I took a look at the things that I really wanted to progress with, well, I don't have anything in my experience that ties back to, you know, softer kind of Chinese, uh, more fluid arts. And Kempo does, even though it's Kempo karate to most of us, there's that lineage. Jiu-Jitsu, my grappling is not very good at all. And Eskrima, a Filipino martial arts. There were three things that I really wanted to learn, and there's one instructor that can teach me. Great. So I started showing up, and I'm putting on a white belt for the first time in, wow, a decade. Ironically enough, the last time I put on a white belt was for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, if you were to look at the time training and and the ages and the accomplishments as valid criteria for who should be teaching whom, Sensei Smith and I are on par. We're about the same age. We've been training about the same amount of time. Our ranks are about the same. I don't care. And I don't think you should care either because I know this man has a tremendous amount to teach me. I've learned so much already in just a couple months. And I think that this is the mistake that a lot of people make. I will put on a belt. I'll put on a white belt. I will learn from anybody. I don't care what their rank is because my pride is not tied 
to me having to be in front of the room. And I think for some people that aren't willing to take instructors, it is. I love learning new things because it all ties together. We've said on the show, there are only so many ways you can move the body. And as I'm learning Kempo or as I'm learning Eskrima stuff, it ties back. Hey, the footwork here looks similar to the footwork that I learned in Capoeira all those years ago. Cool. How does that happen? And I go and I do some research and I see, okay, that makes sense. You know, there's some some ties there with the unfortunate slave trade and people moving around culturally. Okay, I get it. Cool. And it gives me the ability to become a better martial artist. The things that I learn in these classes either give me new perspective or new support or adjustments on things that I already learn. By putting on a white belt, by learning something different from somebody else, it makes me better at the things that I already know. Is that always going to happen? Maybe not obviously, but yeah, I would say it will. You are always going to become a better martial artist by learning more martial arts in different ways from different people. In fact, right now, I would say I have three different teachers, Sensei Smith and a couple others, one of whom has been on the show, one of whom I will continue to harass gently until he comes on the show. Can't harass him too hard. He is my instructor, right? But they all teach me different things and they all make me better, not only at the things that I'm learning with them, but at the things that the others are teaching and the things that I've already learned from others. And I enjoy that continued development. And I'm happy to say that I have so many teachers. That's not to say that you have to go out and you have to have two instructors, three instructors, 12 instructors. If you have a great instructor who continues to teach you new things and challenge your development and make you a better martial artist, then stay there. Keep learning from that person. Let them know how much you appreciate them. Help others learn if that's appropriate. But if you're not learning, if you don't feel like you're developing as a martial artist, then that could be your fault, or it could be that your instructor doesn't have anything more to teach you. And you know what? That may sound like blasphemy. It may sound like something that's going to happen very rarely, but it does happen. And I've had an instructor tell me, you know what? You would probably be better off going to learn from this person or that person, because I think you've really exhausted what I can teach you well. Of course, that takes a very humble and open-minded instructor. And those are good things. This is my challenge to you. I would like you to consider how you can be better as a student. If that means to change your approach with your teacher so that they can be a better teacher to you, you should do that. If you've been in the same school for a couple decades and you really don't feel like you're learning anything new, I'm going to challenge you to have that conversation with your instructor. Because for all the hesitation you may have about that being disrespectful, if it's approached right, if it's approached with reverence for what this person has taught you, they may have been waiting for you to approach them and say, I want more. If you don't ask for it, if you don't demand it, you're never going to get it. That's a life lesson that most of us have learned. You've got to go out and seek what you want. And our martial arts stories, our these cliches that we see in films, or in books, they're full of that concept that you have to go out and ask for it. And I'm going to leave you with a quote from a non-martial artist, but still a great man, Nelson Mandela. It applies here. Education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. As martial artists, we have a responsibility as we develop as people, as martial artists, to help the world move forward, to help those around us in whatever ways we can. Go learn some new stuff. All right. Let me know what you thought of today's episode. I appreciate you listening. Do you have some feedback? You might've been able to tell this one was off the cuff. I took some notes, didn't write a transcript as I often do on Thursdays. I've been getting better at this. I'm enjoying it. It makes it easier to prepare. And I like the way that it flows. So I want your feedback. Give me an email, jeremy at whistlekick.com. That's the best way. Of course, we do have social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram. Just search for Whistlekick. You're going to find us on there. If you want the show notes for this or any other episode, you can check those out at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to check out the things that we offer for sale, that's whistlekick.com. The best way you can help us out 
Share this episode or another episode with a martial arts friend. Let's help grow this community. It has been growing like crazy over the last month or so. And that's because you guys are really stepping up. You're leaving reviews on iTunes. You're sharing it over social media. You're commenting. You're just anything that you do to help move this community forward is appreciated. Thank you. And you know how it goes out. Until next time, train hard, smile, have a great day.